opportunity comes in the form of disaster. The worst flood in American history to that time. Dayton, Ohio engages an engineer for the purpose of flood prevention. But this engineer is a visionary who sees the control of water as only a piece of a larger pattern. It is conservation and renewal of the entire basin of the Miami River which excites his imagination. Right up there, and I could see they didn't know where they were going. We had no precedent for it. Never had a big city like that been washed out. So I had to break the pattern somewhat. And, uh, and of course, I had to let the lawyers put this in legal language. But they say, there's no law like this. You can't do this. But I say, that's what we've got to do, find a way to do it. And they almost fired me, I think. But I'd say, this, this has got to be done. Now find a way to do it. He finds a way. The Miami Conservancy District becomes a prototype for the Tennessee Valley Authority. The dams are built without locks so that rusty machinery will never bring on disaster. Planned communities, recreation areas, lakes and landscapes, schools. It is not just a means of flood control. It is a revolution in social thinking. Dayton has asked a technical question and it is answered by a man who insists on seeing life whole. As always, he regards education as a central human problem. A new opportunity comes in the form of a failing college in the nearby community of Yellow Springs, a backwater village letting the 20th century pass it by. Antioch College is there, founded by Horace Mann in the mid-19th century, but now limping along with a handful of students, a skimpy budget, a lack of purpose. This is not the fresh start in education he has sought, but after all, his specialty is reclamation of lost ground, and he's once again pioneering. He is working against the odds, but his vision spreads. In a few brief years, he brings the college to a position of national prominence and achieves a reputation as one of the nation's most progressive educators whose view seems compounded of equal parts of idealism and practicality. The 16 years of his presidency established Antioch as a permanent and distinctive landmark in American education. But I did have this overall picture that I want to touch all phases of human development. Now probably that is helped by my own experience. Though the college changes, it owes its root ideas to his shaping. But I, it is part of a, a philosophy. Education shall be devoted to discovering significance and purpose. Life and labor and learning shall be inseparable. Technical education shall be secondary to education for man's central human needs. Students shall have a voice in governing themselves. Discovering and pursuing human purpose shall be the central mission of inquiry. And we shall always consider the whole, the relation of the part to the whole. Community and college shall flourish together. In later life, he continues to consider Yellow Springs his home and Antioch one of his major concerns. The college and village embody much of his dreams.
I tried to see in my mind what are the factors that would enter into a good human environment. One was uh, economics, and uh, we built uh, a dozen little industries here. We turned over our government. It was a rotten government. Now we got one of the best little governments in the United States. The school system was down at the bottom. We got an extra good school system. But While his spirit and search transform village and college, to some he seems autocratic. His vision is not always shared by the specialists he brings in to implement it. His gift has been in the form of ideas and energy. But he makes mistakes too because of his inexperience as an educator. He knows his vision in the hazel brush has not been fully realized when he leaves to accept a new challenge.